promoter Chris Dundee said that he reminded him of Sonny Liston, an ex-convict who would use power and intimidation to pound opponents into submission. All I have are these two fists, Jeff Sims snarled. One is a 357 Magnum, the other is my 38 caliber special. Nobody wants to fight me, because I am. Jeff Sims was born February 19, 1954, into a family of 10 brothers and sisters. His father left the family when Jeff was a baby, and his mother died when Jeff was 16. They said it was a heart attack, Sims said. That's what it was officially. She was only 46 years old. I think it was from just getting tired all the time, doing the same old thing, working in the fields, and raising all those children. It was just too much for her to bear. From the age of eight, Sims had spent his summers as a migrant worker in the fields of Pennsylvania, picking tomatoes and cucumbers for 10 cents a crate. Back in Florida, he would work in the fields in the farming of sugarcane, corn, and other crops. Backbreaking work. It was horrible, Sims said. I hated it, but I had no choice. Sims also learned to fight on the streets of Belle Glade, Florida. He was shot stabbed, and burned during a life of, quote, getting bad when I had to. I was misunderstood. In the sixth grade, Sims claimed to beat up the guys in the ninth or tenth grade, offering protection to little guys in the school and receiving free lunches in the cafeteria as payment. He would become acquainted with Belle Glade police officers for minor offenses, a street bully who would drop out of school in the eighth grade. At the age of 17, Sims got into a fight with another man who accused him of stealing his jacket. The man shot Sims twice, once in the small of the back and once in the crown of the head. He picked himself up and hitchhiked to the hospital. Once he was mended, Sims would return with a 22 caliber rifle and return the favor, shooting the man. Only he died, Sims said. Sims was sentenced to 15 years for manslaughter serving six until he was paroled. In jail, he earned his high school equivalency diploma, learned masonry, welding, and was taught the sport of boxing by a convict who went by the name of Duck. Sims would compile a 33-0-1 prison record and would win the Florida Prison Heavyweight Championship. Upon his release, Sims would move to Miami Beach, getting a room at the seedy Henry Hotel. He would begin boxing at the famous 5th Street Gym, run by Chris and Angelo Dundee. Sims would turn pro in March of 1979, going 9-0 while scoring first-round knockouts over former prospects like Tom Prater, Walter Santimore, and Nick Wells. He would go through different managers, but ultimately managed and trained himself. Didn't need nobody telling me how to fight, Sims said. Already knew how to fight. Sims would make the news when he split Muhammad Ali's lip open in a sparring session, a cut that required 10 stitches to close. The incident earned Sims the recognition of the boxer who split the Louisville lip. Ali was in town to speak at a campaign function for President Jimmy Carter while Sims called Ali and Uncle Tom for doing so. During the sparring session, he kept talking to me, Sims said. He told me, so you think you're bad in Florida? Well, I'm bad in all the world. Ali did get into Sims's head. Sims claimed that Ali whispered to him that he was a rich N-word and Sims was a poor N-word and that's all he'd ever be. Enraged, Sims landed a left hook to Ali's mouth, which split open his lip. Ali would then grow a mustache to cover up the scar and the press now called Ali Dark Gable. Sims was knocking out foes left and right and his success against Ali made him cocky to the point that he no longer felt he needed to train. He thought he had the dynamite, trainer Kerry Russell said, so he didn't work hard. Sims's lazy attitude caught up with him on April 15th of 1980 when he went up against Larry Alexander. Alexander wasn't intimidated by Sims, allowing Sims to blow off his energy in the first four rounds, and by the fifth, Sims was exhausted. He was floored twice before being stopped in the sixth so out of shape that he was booed out of the ring. Discouraged, Sims quit the sport of boxing. He started driving a taxi on Miami Beach. 
I used to brag about being the baddest, Sim said. I done whipped Ali all up, and I had just KO'd a guy in the first round, so I thought I could get by on eight days training. I lost my head. But Sims was drawn back into the sport, getting employment as a sparring partner for Ronaldo Snipes and Jerry Cooney. He would sign for a bout against Scott Ledoux in July of 1981, but Ledoux would pull out, and longtime contender Jimmy Young would come in as a replacement. Young was the best opponent Sims had ever faced, and Sims would drop a disputed split decision over 10 rounds. They took it away from me, Sims said afterward. Sims was then offered $75,000 to face Jerry Cooney, but the contract was never signed as Cooney's managers wanted someone a bit more safe before his title challenge of Larry Holmes. Still, the strong showing against Young earned Sims a spot on the undercard of the Muhammad Ali Trevor Burbick bout. Sims would face the legendary knockout artist Ernie Shavers for $7,000. Shavers was still dangerous, but was now at the advanced age of 36. I hope he is washed up for my sake, Sim said. I hope he can't lift his hands. I won't mind taking advantage of him. The guns is handled by a real veteran of boxing, Chris Dundee, the brother of Angela. trying to get him in the corner. If Sims is smart, he'll get out of there. Well, he had him, but let him go. He's like tying up. Nelson Chipman, the referee. The referee better quit walking between them. He's going to get nailed. That's not a good idea. No, it isn't. There's the right hand he has to hope for. David is keeping the left hand up high to get away from the guard against that right. A little roughhouse on the part of Sims. Those punches are going to do Davis no good. Davis in trouble again. Now they're getting by the guard. They may have to stop so many unanswered punches. Davis just can't stand there and cover up and hope Sims will get tired. Davis opening up desperately. Davis 
only hope to land that right hand. He's taking an awesome battling as he tries to do it. It's all Jeff Sims. Oh, what a I'm wondering he's how long now. we're going to let this go on. Shaver's too good an honorable veteran to let him take that punishment. That's right. Well, Shaver's has to move his head. You know, he can't stand there and just let him hit him on his gloves and head because this still takes his soul. He has to move his head. To Shavers. He may be thinking of stopping it. Well, see, Shavers is still in control, but he still can't be taking all those punches. A couple of good left hooks, these guys are right. That was a good one. That right hand just isn't as fast as it used to be. That good right one. hand. That was one. And Sims, oh, oh. He should have gotten out of there. Got to hurry. Got to hurry. Got to hurry. Got to hurry. All the way. Meanwhile, Shavers is leaving himself open as he attacks. He almost turned the fight around. Sims leaving from the mouth. Not the same as the old Shaver's right hand punch. No. Shaver's is dangerous. As long as Sims will stand there, he's going to be in trouble. As long as it lands, that's all that counts. Shaver's doing well with the jab. That's been his best punch throughout the fight, is his jab. Sims is very tired right now. He's still got Shavers in trouble again, though. Yes, yes, he Shavers has. holding on. That's Sims banging the body. Opening the chips up to the head. Shavers isn't hurt. He's just covering up. Now he's using his foot. Get out of the way, bro. Referee's a little bit slow. Davis a little unsteady on his own feet. You are on the other end. Sims didn't like that. Those are solid punches with a minute to go in the round. What a fun this is going to be. Seeing the difference of like a brawl. Doing more wrestling than they're fighting. Good body shot by Sims. They both have scored good right-hand punches in the fight. The blood is dripping from Sims' mouth now. Mouth is I think it's right. That's from Sims' mouth. Really bleeding. This could hurt him. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Sims is wrecked. Sent down on the Sims is down. What is hurting Sims is that he's tired. The bell really saved him. He's being helped back to his corner by the referee. He just had to land a good, solid shot that won. Yeah, that's, that's what Shavis has to watch out for. Shavis has to watch out that if he comes in, trying to put him away, that he puts him in. the head, he almost knocked him down. There's a left hook again. again. Sims is holding on to dear life to his cover. Let's go back to Nelson Chipman getting them apart. Take a look at Sims. Take a look at Shavers. Ernie Shavers is not trying to get his best punch the whole fight. Bob is right here. Ernie Shavers is trying to throw out of there. He's out wobbling. He's wobbling. Sims is very wobbling. He's trying to stay away. There's a right here. Uh-oh. He's wobbling across the ring. It's getting close. Sims in his own corner. Out in the center again. In this way, Tony. Save is trailing. Then bleeding from the mouth. It's a good right hand on the ear. That's a speedo. Then is running. really in trouble. Very much trouble. Very good up attack. Body shot. Body shot. That's a good shot. Body it's going to be stopped. Oh, hold it, hold it. That's, That's enough. It. The fight is over. Shavers is the winner by a knockout after almost being out in the first round. You wouldn't believe this, would you? Unbelievable. Sims would return to boxing full-time, scoring an impressive knockout over fellow ex-convict and bodybuilder Jumbo Cummings. He took off his robe and started puffing up his chest with all the muscles, Sims said. He growled at me, tried to scare the hell out of me. 
I hit him square in the nose and he slobbered like one of those bulls. Then I flattened him with one punch in the eighth. Sims would then come under the promotional arm of Sylvester Stallone's company and be sent to spar with Frank Bruno in England. Sims would think Bruno was a homosexual because he was so polite. But Sims would never achieve stability in his boxing career. Once back in Miami, an acquaintance would climb into his third floor apartment from the fire escape, accusing Sims of messing with his girl. The man would pull out a 25 caliber gun and shoot Sims three times. Sims would escape by throwing himself through the window. He would later lament the fact that he could never escape trouble. I was living the street life, Sims said. Everyone's tough when they're poor. It's like crabs in a barrel. One crab trying to get out, another crab pulling him back in. Sims would be inactive for over a year before being brought in as an opponent against Olympic gold medalist Terrell Biggs. I think uh, he was Olympic, but yet still he fought the Cubans, he fought the Russians, and uh, I'm going in there. I'm, I like I go in there all the time to seek and destroy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and any time you know he get in front of me, I'm going, you know, I'm going to try to take him out of there. Remember in the interview, uh, Jeff Sim told us that he was going to jump right on Terrell. I think that might have been his best tactic to try to shake him right away, but he hasn't done that. He's letting Terrell get his rhythm. And his confidence, you would suspect, because if this battering continues, Terrell should begin to feel more at home than he might have felt coming into the fight. Still no punching from Sims. And no need so far for Terrell Biggs to do anything but throw the left jab. And that is a point subtracted now from Jeff Sims. No, it was not. He said next one will uh, he'll take a point away. All right, next one. You see Sims' limited skills. He really doesn't know how to work his way in behind the jab. You get a position to throw his punches. All he can do is get in there and wing. He just has that raw, natural power. Sometimes it's enough. Tried to load up on the right hand and just missed. And he is tiring out Terrell Biggs. Terrell Biggs right now is dead tired. And maybe overreacted by saying dead tired. He is, he is, right now, think about it, he's got seven more rounds. The rest of this round is seven more. And he's going to be looking pretty soon for a second win. The fluid is dripping from his mouth. Of an increasingly competitive fight. Come on, Bob. Well, Big oh, against Jeff Sims. We'll be back in Reno. In round seven in Reno, Nevada. Jeff Sims comes out of his corner to face Terrell Biggs, who, depending on how you're scoring, has won five, six, or five, or perhaps even six rounds so far in this fight. Despite fighting most of it with his right arm virtually clamped to the side of his body. Alex Wallow is suggesting, and I think quite accurately, that the shoulder has been damaged in some way. Terrell on a few occasions has thrown the right hand, but for the most part, he's been fighting a one-handed fight and scoring heavily to lead Jeff Sims. And not allow him to plant his feet and let his hands go. He just has to keep it up. One of the slowest rounds in the fight so far. Jeff Sims trying to apply more pressure to an increasingly physically damaged Terrell Biggs, who still leads the fight. Side, of course, of the great Cuban amateur Teofilo Stevenson. Sims landed a left there. There's still time if Sims can get the right hand through. You see, you see Biggs waving him in. I guess we should allow him such shows of bravado. He's proved himself. He got an uppercut through on Sims' face there. There's some people who say that all you need is a good left jab, and you could be in the top ten of today's current crop of heavyweights. Terrell Biggs has demonstrated with this fight. Perhaps that is true, and perhaps he does belong. Still fighting back off the ropes. He made it. Terrell Biggs has finished ten rounds. 99-92 for the winner, and still undefeated, Terrell Biggs. Sims would end up in jail again. Three years later, he would return to the ring, but his boxing career 
would go south as he would lose six straight times. it now before uh, Sims uh, possibly gets hurt even more and I think it's a good move by uh, Cappuccino. We are underway. Marv McDonald is the referee and already Sims, Sims, Sims knocked against the ropes. He just took one in the face and said oh my, oh my goodness. Not that he should necessarily be surprised by the force of the shots coming across and he can throw them himself but you know 28 8 and 1 with 22 knockouts. Great jab by Bone Crusher Smith. Sent Sims against the ropes. And brought a little smile to the corner of Bone Crusher's mouth. There it is. Again. There's another. Left, left hand is, is, has been hurting Sims since the get go. There's a body shot. He's a oh, down. He got him with a low blow. Do you think it was low, George? I'm almost sure. I thought Although it, we were, as we sit here right now, behind Sims, shielded. It's over. Knockout first round. It's a I, knockout in the first round, and we'll have to get a different kind of a look at it. Conclusive evidence, should anyone wonder this, from behind Bone Crusher. It'll be the right hand coming up right there. Ouch. I stand corrected. And Sims couldn't stand for long. With his fistic aspirations now long gone, a violent end seemed inevitable. Two years after the loss to Bone Crusher Smith, Sims started an argument with an employee in a grocery store. He would be shot in the chest and killed. Metro Day detectives would question the man who shot Sims, but wouldn't file charges. Sims was 39 years old. 